the ambassadors. And here are the ambassadors themselves, Jean de Dantville and Georges de Selve, looking proud of their achievements and even prouder of their clothes. But the first thing you notice about this painting, the most mysterious thing, the most famous thing, are not the ambassadors, but this splodge. If you look at it from this angle, you'll see it's actually a distorted but anatomically accurate skull. And it's a reminder that even rich and powerful men like these two will die like everyone else. But I don't think this picture is really about the ambassadors. I think it's about what's right at the very centre. This cryptic array of objects. On the top shelf, these objects relate to the heavens. A celestial globe, two quadrants, a sundial. On the shelf below, these objects relate to the earthly realm. A terrestrial globe, a book of arithmetic, some musical instruments, and a book of hymns that's painted in so much detail I could actually sing them. These two shelves depict no less than the entire cosmos, heaven and earth together. Holbein has created an image of a world in which everything can be charted, measured, quantified, understood. A world that mankind finally has mastery over. This is Holbein's most ambitious portrait. It is a portrait of the Renaissance itself. As Holbein assembled his Renaissance stage set, he would have looked to his best friend for the props. A German mathematician and astronomer called Nicholas Kratzer. Kratzer represented the other crucial aspect of the Renaissance, the spirit of scientific inquiry. In 